Hey, what is up? Woo! Hey guys, uh, thanks for tuning in to YouTube. This was supposed to be like an amazing Audax. We finally did it. You guys, you guys, uh, a lot of you watched the uh, almost Audax video that I did a few weeks ago when we got turned around because of checkpoints. For those of you that are not watching this video here in the Philippines, um, we still have a lot of different kinds of lockdowns and uh, border crossings and checkpoints and all this kind of craziness. And uh, and even when you're on a bicycle, you're subject to all of it, etc. So we've waited a few weeks now to go do Audax. This is my first Audax. Um, and, and Audax is, of course, it's not a race. Uh, it's a it's a ride. It's a timed ride. Um, and so you have to complete 200 kilometers in 13 hours or less. They have designated courses, you know, and all that stuff. This year's a little bit different because of COVID-19. So they are allowing people to send in their, you know, Strava or uh, Garmin, you know, whatever, whatever your computer is uh, as proof that you've completed the Audax, you know, et cetera, and the, and the proper location. So uh, long story short, we, we were all set to do that from Subic to Masinlok, um, and I got turned around at the border, which you, which you guys saw, and I decided, well, let's give it a few weeks to sort of calm down, because COVID has been getting better in the Philippines, thankfully, and uh, maybe we'll see if we can get out there and do it again. We had heard from some other people in our CRZ community that did this ride, which goes from Tarlac City, which is in central Luzon, uh, out to Seoul, uh, Pangasinan, which is on the the west coast, uh, so right along the ocean, and uh, and I've never I've only driven to into Pangasinan a few times. I've never ridden my bike there or anything, so I was really looking forward to this ride, and um, so we decided to do that route. Well, we uh, we wanted to roll out about four o'clock in the morning uh, because it gets really hot here in the Philippines. I'm sure a lot of you know that, and um, you know the the idea that we would be on the road for the next six hours at least. Um, you know, meant that we were going to get into the hotter part of the day and, and everything else. So we uh, we ended up leaving a little bit later than that, about 4:45, and um, but it was still pitch black. The sun doesn't come up till about 5:30. Well, I was rolling today with my. Uh, uh, we were actually looking to try to do a, a a really fast time, so I was rolling with my Aero kit uh, today, and uh, I have my. Uh, uh, my aero bars on my titanium bike and everything else and um, when it was dark the lights reflecting off my my windscreen um, were making these crazy prisms and I could barely see I mean it was literally like blinding um, and, and so then I was really just trying to focus down where my light was meeting the road and I found out, you know, we're, we're doing like 35 kilometers an hour and, and seeing only one foot in front of you uh, at, at that kind of speed is just not healthy long term, right? So we, uh, it, it was very, very stressful. And I say it that way because, you know, whenever you do something like this, you know, you already have a little bit of angst because you want to do a good job. We're actually trying to go for, a, you know, a good time. Uh, that's where we had our aero kits on. We were going to time trial this thing all day long today. And, uh, and try to bust it out. And, um, it, you know, uh, spoiler alert, none of that happened. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we get going. Coach drops off at one point. He just says, go ahead, take it easy. I, I thought that he was just gonna go on to the back. It was my turn now to lead. Um, so we carried on. He actually had an issue where uh, he almost went into a ditch, um, got kind of blinded by some lights. <coughs> and um, yeah. So, uh, and then ends up getting a flat and has to roll all the way back to the hotel where we parked uh, on this flat tire. So we carry on. Little did we know though, that we had missed the left-hand turn. So we were lost, um, which, you know, I'm telling you, it started out bad and trust me, it finished bad. So um, we, were, we were lost for a period of time, uh, found a way to kind of connect back to the road that we were supposed to be on, did that got back on that road but at that point now our, our main group had gotten really out far in front of us um, and so we just rode like banshees um, I, I was planning to do an average pace of around 36 to 37 
there were big chunks of the morning where we were doing 42, 43, uh, just trying to catch our guys. And, you know, eventually that, that took its toll. Um, because I'm, I'm not a young guy anymore, so doing that kind of uh, speed on rough roads and a non-controlled environment, it's, uh, again, adds more stress. So um, there's, a, there's a portion in this, in this ride where um, you, you feel like you're kind of at the end. You're actually very close to your turnaround point, but it's in Sewell, and you actually have to go up a pretty big hill. And when you're at the end of a 100-kilometer you know, uh, first, first side, um, and then you have to do this kind of semi monster climb. I mean, it was like, you know, seven to eight percent max, but still, you're tired. It's getting hot. Uh, seven to eight percent does not feel good on your legs after you've been on the flats for a long time. Uh, things like that. So, anyway, uh, mad respect for pros and all that stuff because they do this every day, of course. But anyway, get to the top, get over the top, and as I've said lots of times, I only climb because I love downhills. So, true to form, uh, tank gets going, and I'm cooking along at about, I don't know, 53, 54, 55 kilometers an hour. Um, I'm on my aero bars. Uh, let me pause for one second. Do not descend on your aero bars. Let me repeat that for the people in the back row. Do not descend on your aero bars. It's a no-no, it's not safe. It's one little thing, which I'm gonna tell you about, can happen and boom, game over. So uh, that was my fault. I was being a bonehead, an idiot. Uh, here in the Philippines, we, I think it's God go or God got one of those two. Anyway, um, might've been both of them. That's how bad it was. So I hit a bump, lost control of my bike, veered off the road. Luckily, I was able to keep it upright. Uh, I, and there's a video coming of this, so I'm happy to show, show it to you. Uh, well, not video of the accident, but just show you video of, of where it happened and everything else. I uh, had to go into the grass. Then I was coming to a driveway. There was definitely a good chance that if I hit that driveway with my front tire, front tire is gone forever. And uh, so I kind of made a jump, literally. Uh, got landed on the driveway, no time to slow down whatsoever. Uh, I had a choice. I was either gonna go right into a steel fence or I was gonna go through this tiny opening next to a telephone pole and I had no idea what was on the other side. And uh, I was on the brakes as hard as I possibly could and at the last minute I took my left hand off the brake and I put it out and I grabbed that telephone pole as hard as I could. Now, any number of things could have happened at that point to be honest. I could have broke my arm uh, or, or worse, I, I could have veered into the telephone pole which would have just been catastrophic. Um, Thank God, luckily, um, it, I was able to slow myself down quite a bit. I, I, it took all the momentum, it kind of just ripped me off my bike, so to speak, but I did fall over the edge, and, and this was kind of like a little ravine, uh, or you know, going down into, uh, uh, into the jungle. And uh, when I finished my cartwheel and all of this other stuff, I was upside down, my legs were stuck into these vines, uh, the bike was sort of on top of me. I had missed getting penetrated by a piece of rebar by just a tiny bit. In fact, it ruined my favorite cycling jersey. Um, and uh, I was extremely, extremely, extremely lucky. So that's why I said, don't ever descend on your your, your uh, aero bars. It's just dumb. Um, and uh, especially when you're on open road and anything can happen and anything happened to me. So these guys, where I crashed was actually right in front of a construction company and they just happened to be sitting all at the front gate. I think they were waiting to go home because it was a short day Saturday at work, you know, kind of thing. And uh, they rushed over, helped me get out from there. Much to my surprise, I just had a couple little scrapes, but I had flattened both of my tires. So I always carry one tube, uh, but we, we had a support vehicle today. So I didn't have any of my tools, no tubes, nothing. Uh, so that was a big pain in the butt, but we, we worked through it, figured it out. Some of our group caught up to us that we had passed um, and uh, we were able to get both tubes changed and all that other stuff. So a couple notes to yourself. Um, I love using CO2 cartridges. I didn't have any more today, which is a bummer because pumping up tires, especially road tires to 100 PSI sucks 
every day, every time, no matter what. Um, because you guys, I'm sure like me, if you're gonna carry a pump, you want the smallest possible pump you can carry because you don't wanna carry any extra bulky stuff. I'm the exact same way. So normally I have CO2 cartridges, but I used those last week when I was in the guy Thai and I hadn't had a chance to replace them yet. I, we had a, uh, what I call a sag wagon or a support vehicle. So, you know, no big deal. <clears throat> so we get the tires changed, we take off, we go to our turnaround point, you know, we get past the 100 kilometers, it's a 200 kilometer ride. We make a U-turn, um, we start uh, heading, heading back um, and, uh, you know, we're tired, it's getting hot. Uh, we're, we've been out here a lot longer than we were planning or we were still at a place where we shouldn't be based on what we had planned uh, but with the you know with the getting lost and my accident <laughs> which which added basically about an hour uh, to this whole effort that it did, that didn't need to happen so we stop in Seoul get a little something to eat uh, a little something to drink kind of cool down you know get our composure back you know feel better about yourself uh, type thing and um, and we get going again, and sure enough, uh, we're we're about 30 kilometers past where we stop for lunch. Uh, I'm rolling through this little section. Boom! I get another flat, uh, and and it's on my back tire again. Now I've shared with you guys. I run Gator skins. I run Gator skins just so I don't get silly flats, right? I don't mind big flats. Like when I had my crash, okay, you know, it would have been a even bigger miracle had not, my tires not got flat, but. They were both flat, so okay, great. I deserved it. I went off the road. I'm alive. I don't care about flat tires. But when I'm just rolling along and I get another stupid flat, and I know you guys know what a pain in the ass it is. Yes, I can change tires super fast, blah, blah, blah. But that's not the point. I hate flat tires. I hate, hate, hate flat tires. Anyway, I get a flat tire. So we change it. Now the rest of our group is caught up. They also stop for lunch in a different place, and we were all together, and and I'm not even kidding you. We get it all done, everyone's ready to go again. I literally say to our group, all right guys, let's go, let's get back on the road and let's get this thing finished. And the minute I finish that sentence, my rear tire goes flat again. It just popped and all the air went out. And I, I was like, okay, there it is. If there has ever been a sign from God that it is not your day on the bike, this is it. You've had four flat tires, you've crashed, you got lost twice, yeah. Ride from hell. Not ride in hell, but ride from hell. Unbelievable, I've never, ever, ever experienced this much crap on a ride. And uh, I, I tell you what, I just, and, and I, gotta, I gotta give props out to my group, my CRC family. You know, they are selfless. They're pulling out tubes, they're pulling out tools, they're helping me drop the wheels, you know, helping me get the tires back on. They know that I'm flustered from my accident. You know, everyone wants to make sure that I'm okay. And, and that's what I love about our guys there, our, our group, you know, guys and girls, um, just amazing. So to all of my CRZ family, I love you so much. Thank you for looking after me today and, uh, you know, caring about me and helping me out. It means the world to me, it always does. So, yeah. Oh. So I got a couple videos I'll throw in here for you uh, just to have some fun. But we're gonna redo Audax. Uh, we're gonna do it again on the 24th. Uh, so just coming up in a few days. And uh, I'm gonna be, oh, that was the other thing. Uh, 20 minutes into the ride, my brand spanking new, supposedly state-of-the-art polymer dual bracket for both my light and my uh, uh, camera snaps in half camera goes onto the ground uh, I got a nice little ding in my uh, in my lens cover but it's okay and uh, yeah so there you go just got it from Lazada put it on the bike I rode 20 minutes snap it breaks off camera almost gets destroyed by a truck that was following us thank God it was kind of in the middle of the road so they missed it and uh, yeah so there you go four flats uh, broken camera mount, so that's why no real good video today, sorry. Um, lost twice, crash, super hot, super humid. Yeah, there you go. That's my Audax uh, ride from hell. We're gonna try this again on the 24th and hopefully it gets a lot better. It certainly 
pretty much can't get any worse. So thank you guys so much. If you like what we're doing, uh, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Help me get our message out there. I love being uh, this guy that gets to share my stories, uh, gets to share what cycling is doing for me. I turned the light on, it's getting kind of dark now. Um, and uh, I, and you guys help me do that. So I'm, I'm super, super appreciative. Uh, and grateful. So uh, if you if you do like what we're doing, by all means, please hit that like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, lots more coming. And that's it. See you on the road. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. I'm starving. I had a two day fast before I started this ride. So I'm out. I need some real food. All right. Thank you, See you on the road. Okay. So uh, yeah, we're here on Audax, and uh, we're about four kilometers from Sewell right now. So we did the Tarlac Sewell route. Right behind me, right there, is a really, really rough patch of road that I recommend slowing down for because it threw me off the road at about 52 kilometers an hour. I went through this area here from the road and then uh, you can see behind me it's back there about 200 meters. So if you wanna know how long it takes to slow down from 52 kilometers an hour, to zero, takes a while. Went, went uh, off the grass, into the grass here, then came. You can see this, this is a driveway to a construction company. There's a big lip there. I actually caught air over that lip because I thought it was gonna make me flip. And then, crossed this driveway. Went here gave the telephone pole a bear hug. Actually, I, I sacrificed my tubes. And then uh, right down there is where I ended up. And uh, thank God, the barbed wire fence, which you can see was already down from falling trees. Otherwise it would have just tore me to shreds. And I was laying right on top of all of those bushes there. So I, uh, I haven't had too many of those moments where your life kind of flashes before your eyes. This is definitely one of them. But luckily all I got was two flats and a couple of scrapes and a crazy story to tell. But um, yeah, so if you're ever uh, doing odd acts or just riding out to uh, Saul, Sual, Sual, uh, make sure you take care when you come over the top of that last hill. Uh, there's some really rough road there, just pay attention. Uh, I was actually on my arrow bars, probably not the smartest thing. I've never been accused though of being super smart. Uh, but uh, yeah, I lived, I'm okay. Two, uh, two busted tubes and uh, a few scrapes and you know, a story. So anyway, that's all for now. I'm gonna get back on the bike. I almost got both tires fixed and uh, go get something to eat. Oof. See you on the other side. Okay, come here. All right, Koya Kim and Racing Tradition. <laughs> You're being baptized. Right? Oh. Is this, uh, yeah. this is what we do when we're stupid enough to ride in the middle of the day. You gotta bring that body temperature down right away. Might just go for a shower, right? Now, it's gonna, when we start riding again and the wind's going through you, it's gonna act like an evaporative cooler. So, it'll feel a lot better. You know? 
Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Would you come talk to me? <laughs> See? Ah. Okay. Don't make me put my mean face on. I have like, in certain areas I have windows. Ayup, mang inasal alaminos, 8 km.